Welcome back to Govs on the Go. I'm Hunter Sanders, here with Bryce Beeman. Today, we will be providing all things Governor Athletics. Overall, it was a winning weekend for Gov Sports. Football had a huge win over Tennessee State at home, soccer went 1-1 one one this weekend, and volleyball continues their winning streak. It was an exciting weekend indeed. On Saturday, the Govs displayed a great performance in front of a record crowd at Fort Terra Stadium of over 12,000 fans. In what turned out to be an absolute shootout, Austin Peay came away with a 49-34 win over in-state rival Tennessee State. The two teams totaled for over 900 yards of total offense. Quarterback Jeremiah Oatsfall led the charge with 265 yards of total offense and three touchdowns, while running back Kentel Williams added on to what was an already impressive season with 91 yards and two scores. Gunnar Shalata became the 15th Gov to reach 300 career tackles. Hunter, you were able to announce the game. Coming off this win, how do you think the team is looking going into the rest of the season? Yeah, uh, it was really exciting calling the game. It was a great game in the first half. We saw a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of offense. I think the offense combined for over 500 total yards of offense at, at halftime. Um, but it was really cool to see Jeremiah kind of take charge. Um, and I think six different Govs had over 50 yards of total offense. So it was a very good team effort. Um, and they look promising for the rest of the season. I agree. Well, we saw kind of, we talked about earlier in our last show how it was kind of between Jeremiah Oatesville mm. and Javon Craig kind of fighting for that quarterback spot, whereas Jeremiah Oatesville kind of won it last year. And I feel like he was kind of in like a little bit of a sophomore slump kind of at the beginning of the year kind of thing. Yeah. But I think this game, he really, really proved himself and he fought and he did very well too. And he played the whole game. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, we kind of felt like it was, it was even between him and Javon going into Jacksonville State. Jeremiah played much more against Jacksonville State. Um, but we still kind of felt we were running a dual system. Um, but absolutely, I don't think, I think he played a little looser. He didn't necessarily feel the nerves of trying to prove himself and trying to outdo Javon. Um, but it was a great performance. I mean, he had three touchdowns, over 250 yards. So, you know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna speak too soon, but I feel like he's kind of secured the starting spot. I agree, and I think that they're kind of getting more into it. Once he gets comfortable, your quarterback's comfortable, everyone's kind of comfortable, and I think that that's just a good mentality to have going into the rest of their season. Mm -hmm. But you were at the game, and we saw the Austin P police told the student section to sit down in the game. Like That is crazy. What do you have to say? You were at the game. I was Man. away for soccer, so what did you have to say about it? I think it's ridiculous. Yes. Um, honestly, uh, if, <laughs> can you imagine if you were at Alabama or UT or a big school like that, and the police are asking the fans to sit down and watch the game? No, I honestly can't because I was blown away when I saw this. I saw a tweet that said from the Allstate, actually, a newspaper, and it said that the police told the student session to sit down. I was like, oh my gosh. And we were kind of on our, we we're on our bus because of soccer. Uh -huh. And we were like, what is going on? Like, why would they say that? And you're trying to get hyped at the game. I can't believe our athletic director, our coach Healy, probably was very thrilled to see that tweet and like hear about the police starting to do that to the student section. Absolutely. Yeah, if I was coaching or if I was a player, I'd be, I'd be outraged, honestly. Yeah. That's what, like, when I, like, we're both athletes. Like, I love when people are hyped at our game. Like, right. And have like the police right. come and tell people to sit down. I would be... I would be so thrown off, but um, Absolutely. also something positive that came out of the game besides the wind, but uh, Hunterius Bryant proposed to his girlfriend. You were at the game, what happened? Yeah, it was very exciting. He, uh, he told our broadcasting crew beforehand, uh, he said, if we win, I'm gonna propose. I'm gonna propose to my girlfriend. He told us what she looked like and told us where to put the cameras. Um, and obviously the game went our way. And after the, uh, after the game, he went and got his balloons and poster uh, and walked out on the field and proposed. So that's awesome. very cool moment. Yes, yeah. that is a very awesome moment. And just, it's fun to see that. I hopefully, glad, good thing we didn't lose. I wonder if he would have still <laughs> proposed her because that would have been kind of an awkward proposal, I feel like. <laughs> but, but another team who had a winning weekend was the Austin P volleyball team. The Govs are currently 16 and two for the year and six and zero in OBC play. Last weekend, the Govs continued their winning streak by beating Eastern Illinois three to zero on Friday, as well as beating SIUE three to one on Saturday at home. Senior Cecily Gable had a career high 24 kills against SIUE. Cecily Gable's not the only one to have a big weekend. Sophomore Brooke Moore posted 16 kills against Eastern Illinois, then had a double double with 13 kills and 13 digs. Kristen Stucker continued to play consistently well, being named OBC Setter of the Week for her 19th time of her career. Stucker posted a whooping 88 assists in the two games this past weekend, making her the third ranked governor of all time in career assists. Now the governors were recently ranked number 48 in the country in NCAA volleyball rankings. They are the first OBC team to ever break inside the top 50. Hunter, with so much success so far, what do you think the rest of the season holds for the governors? Uh, I don't even know where to start. They're, ha they're having such a good season. They're 16 and two. Um, they have a win over SEC team Ole Miss. 
um, the, the distribution of wealth has been incredible. Um, it was a little, a little iffy coming in the season. They were projected second in the conference and high expectations, of course, but with losing seniors last year, you didn't really know how they were going to respond. Yeah, but they lost some big names, Ashley Slay, Christina White. But as you can see, other girls have come forward. Britt Moore played last year, but now she's really stepped forward in that role. Cecily Gable is killing it, literally killing it, and doing so well. So I think that they're able to just, they got rid of some like main seniors, but they had girls that had just stepped into those roles, and they have not skipped a beat from last year. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and as we saw last year, they were able to get in the NCAA tournament. And I don't want to speak too soon. I don't want to jinx anything. Um, but it's looking like they're headed that way again. Yes. And, and last year we saw them play UCLA first round, which you don't want to say it's impossible to win, but that's a very tough task. But at the same time, we beat other SEC schools. Last year we beat Mizzou, and you just mentioned we beat Ole Miss this year. So I think anything can happen. I, we're top 50. I yeah. think that there's a good chance. It'll be interesting to see if they continue to play how they can play and they don't get kind of caught up in the mindset that, oh, we're playing a UCLA or, you know, mm -hmm. kind of get in that mindset. I think that we could do well. I don't want to jinx it again, as you said, but I think that I, there's something special about this team and I think that they're going to do well. Definitely. I think that would, be, that would be awesome for Austin P Athletics as well. Yeah, I agree. The APSU soccer team continued to win at home with a 3-0 win over Eastern Kentucky. Senior Mackenzie Dixon scored the first goal, making it 1-0 against EKU. Freshman Rachel Bradbury and senior Shelby Stewart also added to the scoring frenzy in the second half, assuring the win. The Govs then traveled to Moorhead State for a 2 p.m. Sunday game where they lost 1-0. The Govs fought back, but it was not enough to overcome and get the win. Bryce, you guys have a big weekend coming up. You're playing two of the top teams in the conference. How do you feel like the team's morale is heading in? I think our morale is still pretty good. You know, it's kind of getting to end the season. Um, you know, bodies get kind of tired, everything, kind of you get a little more wore out. Mm -hmm. But I think when it gets kind of time to that crunch time type of season where we're currently sitting in fifth place, you know, our team kind of gets that fire under us a little bit. We have 10 seniors. So that's a whole lot of gr girls that are kind of fighting for their last couple games. And so I don't think anyone's ready for it to be over yet. And you get that kind of thought process. You know, we're all competitors, athletes. And so we all just kind of want to continue to fight and win. So I think our morale is still pretty good. And like our team is a very close team and so I think that just the fact that we'll fight for each other and say I know the younger classmen are going to fight for me because I'm a senior my last couple of games and I will fight for them so I think that I think that we have a pretty good morale still going for our team. That's great so you mentioned you guys are fifth in the OVC yeah. uh, I understand that you have to be in the top half of the teams that make the tournament which will be the top four uh, to get home field advantage and given your 23 uh, home match winning streak I assume that would be something that you guys would like yeah. Um, how do you feel, how do you, how do you think that motivates the team? I think that it's very motivating. Um, we played away again and we didn't get the result that we wanted, but I think that if we continue to work, like we play Murray and that's always a huge rivalry, they're currently number two. And so mm -hmm. we play them on Friday at home. And so that'll be interesting because first we have that winning streak, but we, we don't like to lose at home. No one likes to lose at home. And so I think like that whole game, like we need to get that win. I think we can get that win. I think that'll kind of fire us up. It's Murray game, rival everything. So if we can get that one, I think that'll kind of raise us up in the OBC standings. So hopefully we can get that. But then we're going to go and we're going to travel against UT Martin on Sunday. And they're actually seated number one. But if I remember that game, I was – a battle and I think that they're a better team than they were last year which is good for them but I think it'll be I think it'll be a battle but I think if we start getting down to crunch time we can really fight and we can we can do well on the road I think okay well up next Bryce will be interviewing a fellow teammate Amber Bateman uh, for an in sky scoop on Austin P soccer Listen up, Ohio Valley Conference fans. ESPN's mission is to serve sports fans anytime, anywhere. And now with ESPN Plus, fans can get access to thousands of live events and original programming for only $4.99 a month. That means you can finally watch more sports from the Ohio Valley Conference anytime, anywhere on all your favorite devices. To access ESPN Plus, download the ESPN app or visit ESPN.com and just tap on the Start My 7-Day Free Trial to get started. ESPN Plus, more sports, more conferences, more schools, more universities, more teams. Download the ESPN app or visit ESPN.com today. How will you lead to a better future? Will you lead through life-changing innovations or will your leadership shine through the quality of your work? Success is defined by the individual. So it's time to think about the person you want to be and where you will learn 
who lead through excellence. It's time to become a governor at Austin P. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference. Back here at Girls in the Go, I'm here with my own teammate, Amber Bateman. And actually, she's in my class. She's a senior here <laughs> at Austin Peay. Now, Amber, I, I just want to talk to you and kind of personally get to know you more. Well, I know you, but I want our <laughs> viewers to get to know you better. Um, but how did you get here? You're from Ontario, Canada. How were you able to find Austin P in Clarksville, Tennessee? <laughs> yeah, so I actually get that question pretty frequently. And our old coach, uh, Kelly Guth, she was actually Canadian. So I think when I came to the team, we had six or so, maybe in a little bit more Canadians already. So she recruited a lot in Canada, which I'm thankful for. I have Jen that came down with me, and we have Claire on the team as well. So definitely not what we were expecting. Clarksville, Tennessee, I get that question a lot. But uh, it's good to be down here, and I uh, wouldn't want it any other way. You mentioned Jen Smith, who is your best friend <laughs> yeah. and neighbor since you were about three. How, how were you guys able to continue being, like, going to Clarksville? How were, you, how were you guys able to come together? Um, it's kind of funny because we – like you know this obviously we've been best friends since we were three years old and we actually live down the street from each other so we're actually over at each other's house all the time even when we're in Canada so we were talking about different schools that we wanted to go to we both knew we wanted to come to the states and she's like yeah I'm kind of talking to a school in Tennessee and I was like okay uh, what school and she's like Austin P. And I was like, no way, kind of thing. And we're like, we have to make this happen. It's so rare to be able to go to university so far away with your best friend. So we made it happen, and it's, it's been good ever since. That is awesome. You guys are roommates now, too. So yeah. <laughs> it's always fun. Mm -hmm. But earlier you mentioned you had the old coach, Kelly Guth, and now we have a new coach who kind of came in the spring. How has that transition happened? How are things changed since like, your first three years compared to the new coach this year? Oh, I think a big thing is just a new set of eyes on the field. And that goes for every single player you're getting in. You get a new chance. Um, everyone's working hard for the new coach, too, because one of her big aspects in the entire coaching staff is just the positivity. And not only are you going to come to the field like working hard, you're going to come with a smile and you're going to have fun. And I think this year's a little bit of change in atmosphere with uh, just – having fun and finding the love of the game. So I think that's probably the biggest difference, but also looking at different players in different aspects. Like who knew Mackenzie Dixon and <laughs> Jen Smith were gonna be center backs after being, I've grown up with Jen, like I said before, being a striker her entire life. And for Coach K to come in and be like, you know what? I think she'd be a good center back, comes in, like unbelievable there so it's really it's really cool to see that and just every player has a different position and a do a new thing that they can bring to the team that's awesome and we're going to go more into soccer again after our break but just about you how you are a nursing major which is very difficult to balance <laughs> as a student athlete how are you able to balance that actually and i know you have clinicals and everything how, do you, how are you able to do that I think the biggest thing, um, I can say communication and working hard and all that stuff, it is that, but the biggest thing is just loving what you do. And I think it's changing the mindset, oh, I have to get up early for clinicals or I have to wake up early for soccer, it's I get to. And you know, I'm healthy enough and I have enough well-being that I can look after people, that's a privilege. So I should be thankful for that and I attack every day with that kind of mindset. And I think that's the same for soccer. We're healthy enough to be running these 120s. When you're doing it, it's not as fun, but we have the lung capacity to do it. And you get to be out there with your teammates. And yeah. I know it's the same for you. This is our last year. Yeah. So it's just being thankful and loving the fact that, yes, I'm busy, but at the same time, this is what I was born to do. So. 
And that's awesome mentality to have. I completely agree. Yeah. <laughs> Especially running those 120. They yeah. suck at the time, but <laughs> afterwards you're like, you know what? Okay. It's this feeling of accomplishment yes. afterwards for sure. You'll get through it. Yes. It's hard at the time, definitely. <laughs> you're on your hands and knees, second win, but yes. afterwards, you know, once you get through it, you look at your teammates, you're like, I'm glad we did it. I'm glad I have healthy lungs to be able to do so. Yeah, and it definitely makes a difference going into the end of the season when we have to fight in preseason and then have to that at the end of the mm -hmm. season. Now, we're going to come back uh, with Amber Bateman again after this break, but that's our guns in the go. <laughs> Welcome back here to Govs on the Go. I'm here with senior and my own teammate, Amber Bateman, again. Um, so earlier you mentioned that we had uh, had a switch up in the lineup. You said Jen Smith's playing defense, Mackenzie Dixon's playing defense, people we never thought would see <laughs> as a defensive role. How do you think the team is handling that switch up to the lineup so far? Yeah, I think it's been a fairly smooth transition. At the end of the day, soccer is still soccer, no matter where you play. Um, I actually talked to Jen the first time, like after the first practice, I was like, you're playing center back. Like, what do you like? Be honest with me. Like, how do you feel about it? And she's like, you know what? Like, straight up, I'm just happy to be on the field. And, yeah. you know, if you're getting that playing time, you're putting those minutes in for your team, no matter where she is or no matter where we go, as long as we can work as hard as we can, it doesn't really matter where we're put. So. And something funny I remember you mentioned to me is that you used to be a center back and Jen yes. was the forward and now the roles have switched yes. and you have actually been a center forward the last two games. How has that been? Yeah, that um, when we talk back and call up our old friends from high school and club, like they still don't believe us to this day. <laughs> They'll be watching the game and they actually think the game's like flipped, that I'm on oh defense. Because it's, it's always been, I've my whole life, since I was three years old, I've always been a defender, mm -hmm. always been a center back. Jen's always been the striker. And eventually, like, we started to, like, both went to mid, and then <laughs> we eventually, like, kind of swapped places a little bit. It's really different, and yeah. every once in a while, I'll actually be like, hey, Jen, um, how do you get that turn when you're mm -hmm. on the ball? Like, just kind of questions like that, because I know she's been yeah. playing it her whole life, or she'll be like, um, for defense, how do you how do you think they mark up on certain things? So just asking each other, because definitely new situation to be in. And just the fact that you have that work that you can talk to someone and have in like your friendship with her, mm -hmm. and you guys are able to talk about that. I feel like that's really good team chemistry. I feel like with our team, you can go to anyone and talk about that with anyone. Sure. You, and such an open door policy mm -hmm. with our coaches as well. But we're currently on a 23 game winning streak at home. So. We seem to kind of struggle more on the road. I'm guilty of it, too. I'm on the team. Yeah. But what do you think is the reason for that? Well, I think the 23-game win streak, like, that's a positive thing. Yeah. And when we look at that, it means that we can win these games. 
every single game we go into, they're winnable for us. We have such a talented and hardworking team. So it's kind of, it is frustrating for the team because you know this, like you know going into the home games that we can win these games. So these away games, I think it's just a matter of like relying on each other because when you're at home, you have your family, you have the crowd, and <laughs> it's almost like it's such an energy boost. So I think the biggest thing is kind of relying on each other and being like, you know what, like we can win this game. We need to be our own energy system. And I think a big part that plays on that is the bench as well. Like when they, they're getting excited, they're getting the team going before games, like let's get the girls going. Let's dig deep and let's win some away games. Now you have a major role. I know multiple girls have come up and we always talk about, right, Amber's such a firecracker on and off the field. In the games before in the locker room, you're dancing, everything, get everyone riled up. Like how do you, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> Well, I think the biggest thing is just like to have fun. Yeah. Like I said before, we're privileged to be out there. And, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, like strict all the time. Like, let's put a smile on. Mm -hmm. Like, let's dance around the yeah. locker room. Let's dance on the field. Like, yeah. let's kind of feed off that energy. I'm a huge energy girl. And uh, I think hard work beats talent as talent works hard. And I think that's the same with energy and smiles and positivity. Like, let's get going kind of thing. So I love... And also, I do like I do like to dance, <laughs> and it's a lot easier to dance when you have your teammates oh, and yeah. no one else is watching. So, <laughs> <laughs> but we were talking about the games. Now that we have a big game on Friday against rival Murray State, it's always a huge game. They have been winning. They're currently ranked number two though in the OBC rather than number one, mm -hmm. which was the last year. But how does the team feel going into such a huge game? It's, it's at home too. We're gonna have such a, as you said we always do better at home and kind of have that whole team home mentality. How do you think the game's going to go with that? Yeah, I definitely think it's going to be a grind. Um, I actually think maybe this loss that we had this past weekend was a blessing in disguise because, you know, when we finished that game, everyone was pretty heated almost. Mm -hmm. And we had this, like, deep gut feeling. It almost made you sick to your stomach. You know, we love to win, but we hate to lose more. And that feeling is still with us today. And we're going to come into practice hot. And I know we're going to come to that game angry. And especially it's that little extra something because it's Murray, <laughs> too. Oh, yeah. It's a home game. It's Murray. We just had, you know, a gut-wrenching loss. So I think there's a lot of power that's behind us. And I think that's going to result into good things. Now, we also play UT Martin on Sunday. How do you think the team's going to prepare for that game as well, just coming off the game against Murray? hopefully the win against Murray, but how do you think we're gonna prepare for like, these two games just because they're the number one and number two teams? Yeah, I think they're gonna be two big games coming up and uh, don't get me wrong, end of the season, everyone's kind of feeling a little bit, but you know, it's all mental. So um, I think the biggest thing, like I said before, is just the energy rolling with it and just making sure we have each other's backs and a big thing that the coaching staff has really said to us is we can't control how other teams are doing in the conference. We can't control what they're doing to prepare for these games, but we control what we're doing. So as long as we come into practice and not worry about these variables like weather and how tired we are and those sort of things, then I think we'll be okay. Okay, I agree. Thank you, Amber, for being here. Um, I'll see you later at practice. <laughs> yeah. but Thanks for watching. We'll come back with me and Hunter again, but this is Govs on the Go. I'm from Clarksville, Tennessee. Fort Knox, Kentucky. Jackson, Tennessee. Hawkinsville, Kentucky. Memphis, Tennessee. From Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Knoxville, Tennessee. Little Rock, Arkansas. St. Louis, Missouri. From Gaffney, South Carolina. Seattle, Washington. Jeremy, Haiti. I'm from Three Sponsors, Brazil. Chicago, Illinois. Hawaii. Phoenix, Arizona. Roselton, Georgia. From Modesto, California. I want to be a neonatal nurse. An athletic trainer and accountant. Playing the NFL. Interior designer. Physical therapist. Law enforcement officer. Orchestral technician. Social worker. Physician. Politician, psychologist, a CPA, a social worker, nurse practitioner, physical therapist, restaurant owner, a politician, start my own business, veterinarian, an elementary school teacher, the NBA player, cardiovascular surgeon, anesthesiologist, a businesswoman in Nashville, social worker in Miami, Florida, politician in Washington, D.C., Colorado, in Orlando, Florida, Houston, Texas, in Chattanooga, Memphis, Tennessee, Seattle, Washington, in Nashville, Tennessee, San Diego, California, Nashville, Tennessee, New York City, New York. 
San Diego, California. Atlanta, Georgia. Nashville. Los Angeles, California. New York, New York. Memphis, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. Orlando, Florida. Los Angeles, California. Baltimore, Maryland. Clarksville, Tennessee. Carolina Beach, Carolina. Philadelphia. St. Louis, Missouri. Clarksville, Tennessee. Back here at Govs in the Go, we want to say thanks again to Amber Bateman for that inside look on the Austin Peay soccer team. Now, after coming off a loss in the road, the Austin Peay soccer team is looking to continue their 23-game winning streak at home against rival Murray State, who is currently seated number two in the OVC, this Friday at 7 p.m. The Govs will then turn around and play the number one ranked in the OVC, the University of Tennessee Martin, on Sunday at 2 p.m. at UT Martin. Now, after coming off two big wins this weekend, the Austin Peay volleyball team also has two conference games this weekend. The Govs will travel to Nashville to play Belmont University at Friday at, five, at 6 p.m., and the Govs will also play Saturday at 2 p.m. against Tennessee State. In other news, the Governor tennis team traveled to Dallas this past weekend to compete in the SMU Invitational. Reigning OBC Player of the Year Fabi Schmidt placed third in the number two singles bracket, while the transfer from Kansas University Tatiana Nikolova placed second. Claudia Yanez Garcia also had a good weekend, edging out a player from Texas A&M to take third place. The doubles pair of Helena Kupig and freshman Danielle Morris were the lone winners for Austin Peay as they took first in their respective flight. The Lady Govs will be back in action this Thursday in Chattanooga. Also in action this past weekend was the softball team. They traveled to Carbondale to play SIUC. Despite totaling nine hits, they were only able to produce one run and suffered a 10-1 defeat. It's been an up and down season for the Governor football team, but after a thrilling weekend at home, they will look to take that same energy and level of play on the road with them as they take on the 3-2 SEMO Red Hawks. That game will be on one, at 1 p.m. on ESPN+. If you love baseball, don't forget to check out the lineup. Joshua Adams and Jeff Matthews talk Major League and Austin P. Baseball every Thursday at 11 a.m. right here on APSU-TV. You can also find reruns on YouTube and social media at APSU-TV. That's all from us. Thank you for tuning in and catch us next time here on Govs on the Go.